Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I'm installing my new door. In my last episode, I made a brand new garage door. I really like the result, but it's not over yet. I need to put it in place. I'll start on another subject. While the finish on my door was drying, the cutter guys stopped by. Those long gutters were formed in the factory because they were too thick to form on site. But they closed the ends and made the holes on location just before installing them. I'm so glad there will be no more water splashing on my walls. All the water from the roof will go directly into the city ditch. But this doesn't help me with the installation of the door. The first thing I have to do is close the wall around the door opening. I start by varnishing two pine planks just for that. When both coats are dry, I cut them to the right dimensions. Then I put the first one in place and mark its width. Then I can rip it to size. Then it's as simple as screwing it in place. But the other side is more challenging because I have two outlet boxes in the middle of it and I have to install a big welding outlet at the bottom. I begin with the difficult one. After tracing its shape, I cut it. When I'm done, I can cut the two others. Then I put it in place. As you can see on that day, I had help from John, another French citizen. He was in Quebec for a business trip and spent his last afternoon here, helping me with the installation of my door. But this door needs some rails and I have to modify my old ones by cutting part of them. Next, I drill the sections so we can screw the hinges. All the screws are inserted from the outside by John. But at some point, he has to leave because missing his plane wouldn't be funny. So I finished the rest with René. Now I need to cut a piece of the horizontal section of the rails. If you're wondering what kind of modifications, well, I have to cut some metal parts from the rails because of the way the top of my walls are made. Not too many garages, I have a visible beam right on top of the garage door. So I have to remove a little bit of metal so the rails will fit on my wall. But holding a rail with cardboard boxes and paint pans is not very efficient. So I cut into a scrap piece of wood which came from my top plates. Maybe you still remember this one. The one I nicknamed the Toe Crusher. 
<laughs> yes, it's the nice piece of wood that broke my toe last year. And if you're interested to know, my toenail has not yet fully regrown. But this is a big piece of wood. Even a cut on each side is not enough. So, just like I did last year, I used a reciprocating saw to finish the cut. But the wood is ugly. I need to make it look like new. It looks great now. Now I need to drill some holes, so I'll be able to screw it to the ceiling. Now with those 30 pieces of wood, I can install the rails in place. But before going any further, I need to do something with my rail modification. I start by trying to drill a hole. But I'm unable to do it in place. So we remove the rails, bring them into the shop and drill the necessary holes. Now I can put a wooden block to replace the metal parts that were screwed together. and it's as sturdy as it was before. Now we can install the top rollers. Okay. Here I'm making a nice mistake. Since the door is higher than the one I had in my shed, the rail doesn't go down to the floor. Without thinking about it, I install the bottom plates in the center of the last sections. What a stupid thing to do. But I haven't installed all the door's middle hardware. Now I can screw the vertical rails to the wall. It's time to install the door springs. I drill and install the spring in place. But before I can think of working on this, we need to open the door. I'm so lucky that René is always nearby to help, because I wouldn't be able to lift that door by myself. But I just realized that I put the springs on the wrong side of the ceiling block. So I remove them and place them on the right side. Then I can tie the metal wire to the rails. Finally, we can try the door. It's working, but we have too much pressure on the springs. The door doesn't stay closed. I untie the wires and retie them with a tiny bit less pressure. Now we can begin to work on the door's frame. We start by cutting some long boards of cedar to the right length. 
Then I clean the rough wood with a handheld electrical planner. Then we sand them smooth. I want a thick door frame, so we keep the back of the boards rough. Next, I cut those boards to the door's exact opening dimensions. Now that I have all the frames pieces, I can brush some finish on them. While they dry, I can explain to René the huge mistake I made. I'm explaining that since my rail wasn't going down to the floor, and like a moron, I installed the bottom pivot plate in the middle of the bottom section, this won't open when the door frame will be in place. To fix this, I need to lengthen the rail down to the floor. So I begin by cutting some iron angles. Then I weld them together to make a U-shape. Since I welded a long piece, I can cut two sections from it. Then I weld some strapping, so I'll be able to screw them to the actual rails. and paint them. When the paint is dry, I drill all the necessary holes. I use a bigger drill bit to make a chamfer. Now I can screw them in place. But my problems are not over yet. I never thought that the front of the U would be too long. So I have to cut a small part of it. Finally, the door closes. Now we can move the bottom plate at the right place. Then we can install the door frame. It's as simple as putting them in place and screwing them. Next, I drill two more holes in the barrel bolt. Now I can install the barrel's bolt in place. Then I can mark where to drill the locking holes and drill them. Finally, I can lock the door. I managed to damage the top of the door the first time we opened it. The door hit the ceiling fixture. It's the reason why I turned it by 90 degrees from the other one. But now I have to add finish to the damaged wood. And I can install the garage door's bottom. After screwing the aluminum rails, we can measure the rubber seal, cut it, and install it. Ah! 
Now nothing can pass underneath my door. It's well sealed. But I never thought of the door's bottom when I drilled the locking holes. I need to drill new ones. Now I can run a bead of caulking around the door. Finally, my door is installed. Now that I can see it in place, I can honestly say that I love it. It's even nicer from a distance. So, see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker. <laughs>